Hello, friends. Today, let's talk about Terra Verde, which means green earth. In natural pigments, we have several pigments of green earth, but today we will talk about Verona green earth and Nicosia. And here you can see the transparency of Verona depicted in those drawdowns. Although as a pigment, you can see they are very, very similar. But once we will start mix with oil, that will be different story. And you notice on the jar, it says four ounce because Verona Green Earth is very fluffy pigment. So we can't put 100 grams in the jar, which is what we always try to do. We try to fit 100 grams in a four ounce capacity jar. But when the pigment is very low density like that, then we put in as we just fill the jar up and it may be less than 100 grams. As always, we will mix with uh, just refined linseed oil. And usually green earth doesn't take big amount of oil. It's moderate, but not same like, let's say, like what we did in umbers. Umbers, you know, umbers take, absorb more oil by weight and even by volume. You can see the texture of Verona green earth, which is typical of the green earth. They have more coarse pigment, so they tend to be a little bit more matte when they dry. And you notice how transparent it is. If you will compare with other videos, you will see when I grind the pigment, the stain of the glass very permanent. And here you can see how very transparent. Yeah. This is from the tube they look almost identical, which from the tube right now, you will see Verona green earth always will be buttery and fluffy. And you can see how short peaks it's leaving. It's not long color. Of course, you, if you want to change that property, you can add a little bit of buttered oil, but we didn't do in this case. Here's Nicosia, you can see here's 100 grams because that pigment slightly denser than Verona Green Earth. Both green earths that we have here are selenite minerals. Colorant from green earths can be, come from different minerals, primarily glauconite and selenite. They're very similar chemically, but they form under very different circumstances. For example, selenite forms near volcanoes, whereas glauconite in ancient seabeds. Again, you can see how color changes um, dramatically from pale uh, pigment to very bright green color. It's because these pigments have a lot of other components to that, yeah. mostly clay. And of course, I overshoot here oil, which again, we will repeat then, usually green earth doesn't take much oil. So these green earths contain minerals such as chlorite, quartz, feldspar, and as Tatiana mentioned, clay minerals, which are essentially transparent in oil. You see, Nicosia Green Earth, slightly cooler, but still very transparent. And here's from the tube. And just because we ground much more on three roll mill, so it's looking smoother. smoother. Yeah. All green earths, whether they're from glauconite or selenite, have a color index of PG23. And that's a natural green earth. And from the tube, you can see then Nicosia green earth is slightly longer. Obviously, it's smaller particles, and so it's behaved different with oil. And you can see then it's... Forms a little bit more of those long peaks. Yes. 
because you lift up the yes. spatula. spatula. Let's mix with whites. So here's Verona, much warmer color you can see on the screen. Here's uh, with one third of the lead white. Lead white is warm white. So it's going nicely with Verona. And Verona is very transparent. So then even lead white is overpowering very fast. The Verona Green Earth does originate in the Verona province of Italy, whereas our Nicosia comes from the island of Cyprus. So two different locations, but similar types of minerals, since they form under the same types of conditions. And here's the titanium, and you see titanium is cool white, and so that's immediately make even warm Verona make much cooler and of course the color dissipate very fast. Now here's our Nicosia, or Nicosia, which is probably the correct pronunciation, green earth. We mix it with lead white here and white. And it is a little bit cooler. Very similar in nature, but Nicosia is a little more opaque than the Verona. And these pigments have been used for many, many centuries, mainly because they are considered to be permanent. They are unreactive to chemical changes in the paint film. And as a result, they've been used successfully in painting for many, many centuries. In fact, the green earths are found in Egyptian pottery. And especially prior to the Renaissance, flesh tones were made with a green earth underpainting. I just wanted to say that it's very easy to work on portraitures because of the nature of both of these colors. Uh, they are very transparent, very easy to work with, uh, with other colors. And here we're mixing with blue rich yellow ochre. And blue rich has a very small particles, very opaque uh, yellow ochre. So it's immediately overpowering. A boss this green earth. And speaking of portraitures, Chinino Chinini recommends painting and underpainting in green earth for flesh tones. And that was the practice in the medieval and early Renaissance period. Not so much these days in portraiture, but Green earths are very functional in cooling shadow on flesh tones because they don't tend to dominate and turn things green immediately. Here uh, I'm mixing with Vero, um, Venetian red. Yes, with Venetian <laughs> red. And um, Venetian red, if you didn't see our previous program about Venetian red, please watch that. It's very interesting. And Venetian red is the coolest red among our red, red ochres, red ochres yeah. but even though it's ochre, it's supposed to be transparent, but it's still very powerful for green earth, even as an ochre. You can see that very easily here, yeah. how it dominates both of the green earths, even with the Nicosia being a little bit more opaque. And just for comparison, so I took cadmium orange, where, to be honest, I tried three times before I even started the film because I would every time overpower with slight, the smallest amount of the cadmium. Cadmiums are very opaque, strong tinting colors because they're synthetic, very small particle size. So they easily dominate any kind of mixture. That's why earth colors are so easy to use, because they're forgiving in mixtures, especially in flesh tones. That's why the old masters used them, 
They had brighter colors, more intense colors, but they chose primarily to use earth colors in the flesh tones. And it here like I'm fighting back and forth with... <laughs> Yeah, it looks like you're trying to match on the left side there. Yeah. I'm trying to get that down. <laughs> and scaling it little by little. And I guess I'm still not happy. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. So here we will show you, as always, the comparison of uh, two green earth with lead white on left, left side and titanium on, on right. Thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. Bye now. <laughs>